Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is August 20th when I'm filming this video and you know, the end of August for me starts to signal the winding down of summer and the approaching of my favorite season, which is fall, autumn. I love all the seasons. There's really only one part of the year I'm not that crazy about, and it's that period after Christmas and before spring starts to show its beauty. That part is a little bit, I call that the doldrums, but otherwise I love all the seasons, but I have a special place in my heart for the fall season for so many reasons that we'll talk about in upcoming videos. But the reason that I bring that up is as fall begins to approach, I begin to turn my attention to things having to do with the fall. And I've started to have that urge to like decorate with pumpkins and fall colors. And one of the things that I associate with fall are the scents of fall. So for me, that is a lot of spice, spicy, warm, woody kinds of fragrances, coffee fragrances, chocolate fragrances, all of that ambery fragrances moving into the winter season, all of that gets heavier, including vanilla, all of that, all of those sort of warm, gourmandy, ambery, spicy, all those families of fragrances I, I think about. So lately I've been thinking a lot about coffee. I've had this obsession with drinking coffee, making it in the morning, making it midday, making it in the evening. And I've also thought a lot about coffee fragrances. You ever get obsessed with something and just can't get it out of your head until you scratch that itch? There is one coffee fragrance in particular that I've been wanting to purchase. I've been trying to find it on sale and I haven't. So I went ahead and purchased it retail, which is something I almost never do. I'll talk about that a little bit later on. I'm just getting started with the coffee fragrances. I have over 20 to share with you. I wouldn't call them all coffee fragrances. Sometimes you see videos that feature a specific note and the fragrances that are talked about have the note in it, but it's really not a fragrance that features that note. So I do have what I call like an honorable mention category because I have a handful of fragrances that have a coffee note that is kind of noticeable, but it's really a supporting actor. I'm gonna start with those and then I'll get into about 15 heavy hitter coffee fragrances where coffee is a very, or espresso or something like that is a very prominent note. Before we get going, I've asked this before in previous videos, I'll ask you again, do you like coffee? If so, do you like it light? Do you like it medium? Or do you like a dark, robust, bold brew? That's what I like. I like my coffee super bold. I want it almost to be thick. <laughs> it's so bold in the cup. And I put in a little sweetener and I'm good to go. I don't do any milk. I used to do super sweet coffee, but I'm straight like bold black Pacific bold coffee, if you know that flavor. All right, let's talk about the honorable mentions here. Okay, I made the mistake of opening the top on this first one. So I think this one wants to be talked about first. <laughs> it is Deluxe by Tiziana Terenzi. I have forgotten how potent this fragrance is. You know, as I get older, my nose, my sense of smell rather weakens a little bit. So sometimes you'll hear me talk about a fragrance in a video that maybe is strong to you, but to me, it's on the softer side. I tend to think of this as being a little bit sort of between soft and strong, but I made the mistake of kind of depressing the atomizer as I was trying to put the top back on, walked away. There was a little drop on here and I could smell it across the room. <laughs> So maybe this is stronger than I think. This is a fragrance that has coffee and rose and vanilla in it. And I think they all sort of play an equal part. Very, very pretty, elegant, sophisticated kind of fragrance. I find it on the mature side, not overly mature, but definitely one that has body, substance, and I think it's just a very pretty fragrance. Coffee is balanced by rose, like I said, vanilla. There's also iris and some other like musky notes in here that really round out this composition. I find it soft around the edges and not super coffee forward, but definitely deserves an honorable mention. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance. Next up, I have three fragrances that vibe the same. They're kind of, they're the same, except they have sort of different levels of intensity. Like if you turned up the dial, you might get one versus the other. So I'll include them as one. And we'll talk first about Love by Sofia Vergara. I think this is a really pretty fragrance. This is one that people are beginning to declutter or get sick of or feel like it doesn't have longevity and all of that. But 
let me tell you something for 20 something dollars that you can find this and sometimes less and maybe a little bit more this is an outstanding fragrance the bottle's lovely with this sort of gem cut it's the softer of the ones i'm going to show you in that it's floral it does have vanilla and it has a coffee accord in there but it leans a little bit more in the floral direction than the other ones that i'm going to share with you but definitely a stunner of a fragrance i think for the time that it lasts and worth checking out if you need an affordable option some people compare this to black opium and it is very much like black opium so if you want that fragrance but would like a more affordable a little bit lighter version check out love by sofia vergara if you like black opium itself but would prefer a more affordable option check out from dossier floriental vanilla listen this is like an exact spot on dupe i detect no differences in fact, I enjoy this more because one of the problems that I have with the original Black Opium is that at least on me, it doesn't feel like it lasts the longest or it loses its oomph really quickly. Whereas this one, this Floriental Vanilla, really does have some lasting and sticking power to it. And I think these bottles are in the 30 ish dollar range. I have to put a sticker on the back just to remind myself what some of these fragrances are as I'm scanning through the shelves quickly. But yeah, check this one out. And then of this group of three, Black Opium Intense probably has the strongest coffee accord in it. This is a bomb of a fragrance. I really adore this. It's a very highly feminine, heavy, vanillic coffee with slight hints of floral and sweet and spicy in it all at the same time. I don't care what anybody says about these fragrances being basic or outdated. I disagree. I think this is the kind of fragrance that, first of all, this intense version lasts very nicely on me. And it makes me feel all kinds of feminine and beautiful and it's the kind of fragrance that is a crowd pleaser in a room and it drives the gentleman wild and I think of the three like I said this one has the strongest coffee accord although it's more sweet than coffee for sure we all know the next fragrance it gets a lot of hate but those of us that like it like it and it is good girl from Carolina Herrera I have a backup of this and I need to start to break it open I'm about down here on this particular bottle and it's because I, I really like this a lot. Would I say that I absolutely love it and can't live without it? No, but I do like it. It has very special meaning for me because it was one of years and years ago when this came out, it was one of the fragrances that was on the more mature side that I really started to like again. If you've watched my old videos, you know I had a thing with mature fragrances when I was a little girl and would wear my mom and aunt's fragrances back in the 80s and then I went through this citrus phase and this Victoria's Secret phase and and have circled back to the more mature womanly fragrances. This is heavier on the florals maybe than some of the others. There's tuberose in here. I think this one has a powdery accord, probably due to orris and the musk together give it a little bit of a powdery feel, but you do get some of the coffee in the top of this fragrance. You know, it doesn't live throughout the length of it, so I wouldn't call this a coffee fragrance, but it deserves an honorable mention. A very, very pretty fragrance, a softer fragrance, softer in texture that doesn't get mentioned a lot anymore and is typically talked about a cough as a coffee fragrance. I do think you smell the coffee in here, but maybe not as pronounced as some of the other notes. It is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. You get some sweetness in here, some really nice, just juicy sweetness from pear and there's a caramel base note in here. There's vanilla, there's iris, there's some other florals and there's some coffee. I think this is an underrated fragrance, one that I had overlooked for a long time until it was gifted to me and then realized this is a really beautiful, soft, feminine, sweet, fruity, and sort of gourmand fragrance, but not obnoxiously so in any direction. Understated in all of those directions, and yet it all kind of works together. Fragrance with definitely a coffee note, but not as pronounced as some of the ones that I am going to mention. Two more masculine leaning honorable mentions here. This is from Alexandria Fragrances. It's called Dark Night. It is a dupe for Black Phantom from Killian. And definitely leaning on the men's side of fragrances. It has a little bit of an aftershavey, aromatic, fougere-ish kind of touch to it. Does anyone else pick that up in this fragrance? I know most people talk about Black Phantom as being sort of a spicy, gourmandy kind of a fragrance but I think this definitely has some masculine touches to it that people don't really share. Anyway, chocolate, caramel, there's heliotrope, which gives it a little bit of a powderiness and a coffee note in here that isn't quite as pronounced, but definitely adds some depth and character. Fun little number. 
And then one from one of my favorite lines, not my very favorite, but a top favorite, and it's the Carolina Herrera Confidential line. This is Bronze Tonka, a bomb of a fragrance, will fill up an entire room. Definitely has a nice coffee note accompanied though. It's not the star player. It's accompanied by a really nice leather note in here. There's a cypriol oil that gives it this deep woodiness. There's an oodiness in here. It leans masculine. I feel very, very comfortable wearing it. I think it's beautiful, powerful strong definitely a cold weather kind of a fragrance because it's so thick and so strong with a bit of coffee so all of the fragrances that I've mentioned so far coffee is a supporting player but not the star player and we're worth mentioning in case you're interested let's jump into the straight up I know you're a coffee fragrance kind of fragrances Starting with a fragrance that we've all heard a lot about and people have decluttered because the longevity on this sucks but the fragrance itself is really quite gorgeous for the time that it lasts, which sadly is about a half an hour to an hour, I have to say. But if you want a fragrance where you're just going to go to bed in it, or you're just going to hang around the house and you can re-spritz 20 times a day and not have to worry about it, this is fabulous. It does have an orange note in there, so there's some citrus, but that fades. And what you really get out of this is this combination of chocolate and coffee and tonka. The coffee, I think, is pronounced enough in here for this to qualify as a coffee fragrance. Well, it could be a coffee. Maybe, maybe it's on the cusp of an honorable mention and an actual coffee fragrance. I so wish that this lasted longer. I do find it lasts longer if I layer it with something like a Molecule 01 kind of a fragrance or one of those Ambroxan types of sprays. It gives it a little lasting power, so check that out. But yeah, you can find this fairly inexpensively. People have stopped talking about this, but I still like it. A really lovely, maybe even stunner of a fragrance. I use the word stunning and stunner lightly because that's a pretty strong word. And I use it for this one because it's surprising. You spray it on, you don't think much of it, and then all of a sudden you get these wafts of this intoxicating gourmand kind of a smell that keep pulling you in and you're like, I think I love this. So this is very much in the super, super like, you know, love-ish category. It's from Trussardi, it's from a special line, La Vie de Milano, and this is called Passeggiata. I have to look at this because it's the longest name ever. Passeggiata in Galleria Vittorio Emanuel II. <laughs> longest name ever. Apparently refers to a place in Italy. This is a lovely gourmand fragrance, lovely, softer. Yes, it does project. Okay, so it's not a skin scent. You do get a bubble, but it's on the softer side. It's not like a beast mode -y kind of a fragrance. It's a more intimate fragrance than something maybe like than bronze tonka, which people are gonna smell you down the block with this. One thing that I love about this fragrance, it has a pronounced coffee note, but it's also accompanied by hazelnut. Beautiful combination with a delicate coconut far in the background and some florals. There's tuberose and jasmine in here, but super, super soft in a way that neither of those floral notes overpower the gourmand aspect, the hazelnut and the coffee in here. Beautiful, warm weather, lovely, appropriate fragrance. Actually, this is a year-round fragrance, but if you smell it, you're going to associate it more with fall and winter because of how it smells, but it performs beautifully in the summer too. A nice summer gourmand if you want something not overpowering. Love this. Next, I am so excited that I finally took the plunge and ordered this fragrance. This is the one that I was talking about at the start of the video that I was waiting for a sale on, and I kind of missed the boat on this. So fragrancebuy.ca, if you're not familiar with that site, go bookmark it. They're out of Canada, but they've got just such a great selection of fragrances, and sometimes they'll get overstock or whatever from other places, and they're able to sell fragrances on deep discount, including when this came on and I just, I said, I, I think I'll wait and I regret it. And it's Teo Cabanel, Cafe Cabanel. Beautiful fragrance. This is just a delightful one. It is spicy. It's milky. It has cinnamon touches to it and this beautiful coffee note in it that is to me intoxicating and fantastic. Lovely fall gourmand fragrance. You know, it's the kind of fragrance that is gourmand but in an elevated way. So it's not the sort of more young girl sweet smelling. This is a grown up gourmand and all kinds of sophisticated, beautiful, a softer, more gentle gentle fragrance but still has projection and presence and I can't wait for my bottle to get here. 
I talked about this next fragrance in a video called Blind by Chronicles Volume 3. It's a series of videos sharing with you my experience with fragrances that I purchased. Did I like them? Did they not work out? You know, what happens with them? What's the, what's the deal with them? This particular volume featured some indie fragrances, including <laughs> Cafe Ole. Look at this teeny tiny bottle. I got this on Etsy from Organic Perfume Girl, and you can find her at organicperfumegirl.com or just look for Organic Perfume Girl on Etsy. And the joke in the video was that I ordered this itty bitty teeny tiny bottle, not really realizing just how small it was. I knew it was gonna be small, but this was $35. What? However, I have to say it's a really lovely fragrance and it gets better and better the longer I let it sit. It doesn't look like I've used it a lot, but I really have. I'll splash this. The only thing I don't like, I should probably put this into an atomizer. I'm not big on like dabbing fragrances on myself. I actually can't stand that. I prefer to spray. But anyway, this is a dabber and I've dabbed a lot, probably three or four times now. It's one that I'll wear like in the mornings or, you know, as I'm going to bed to test out and I want to wear it a full day. This fragrance to me, if you have smelled Coffee Break by Maison Margiela, it has a little bit of coffee, but it's also aromatic. There's some lavender notes in that one, if I'm not mistaken. This fragrance smells to me like the air in a coffee shop that is next door to a massage parlor. So you get some of the oils from the massage parlor sort of seeping through the AC system or something like that. They shared an AC system and the wafts coming out from next door have some of that aromatic touch to it. If you think about lavender and eucalyptus and those kinds of things next door with some of the beautiful espresso smell from a coffee shop, combine those together and add some sweetness and you get Cafe Olay. I think it's a really delightful little fragrance. Not a love, but definitely a good strong like. All right, we have one more that is sort of on the cusp of being a soft coffee fragrance and a strong coffee fragrance, and then we're going to hit the super powerhouse ones. So the next one is New York Nights from Bond Number no. 9, a more recent addition in the past few months to my collection, and a love. There are florals in here, but the base of this has caramel and coffee which to me, depending on the weather, like the humidity, how your body reacts that day, all of that, the temperature, yeah, it, you know, it depends on the day. This comes across very gourmand to me. I get a lot of the caramel, I get a lot of the coffee, but I do get the florals to round it out as well. But it has enough coffee in it that I wanted to include it in this video. I do love this bottle. You know, I'm a fan of Bond Number no. 9 and these bottles. And, um, you know, I'm from New York. What can I say? I also enjoy that this fragrance has a sandalwood note in it, which adds some roundness and woodiness to this. Really beautiful fragrance. Next, we have a fragrance that I always enjoy wearing. It evokes so much for me. It's from Comptoir Sud Pacifique. It's called Vanille Cafe. The coffee in here definitely has some milk in it. It's not your strong espresso coffee. It's a softer, sweeter coffee, and it has vanilla accompanying it, but there is a pronounced coffee in here. There's some woodiness from cedar. There's musk. There's even a really soft almond. So this is a very gourmandy, woody fragrance at the same time. So vanilla, coffee, woods, all of that together. Lovely. I feel very comfortable dousing myself in, in this. It does have projection. It does have decent longevity. It's not a beast mode fragrance, but certainly one that, you know, folks are going to smell you and you're going to smell, like I said, woody, coffee-like, vanilla-ish. Really, I think an underrated fragrance. Moving deeper into strong coffee territory, Cafe Rose from Tom Ford is a gorgeous, very sophisticated, date night, elegant, elevated, evening events kind of a rose and coffee fragrance. Rose is strong in here, although like compared to Deluxe, where this is a softer, more gentle rose, this is a pretty pronounced, sharper rose with the coffee accompanying it. The coffee is pronounced enough to be up here in this the top of this category and you get some woodiness in here. This, it's a strong fragrance. It's almost like what I wanted Portrait of a Lady to smell like from Frederick Mall. That one is too, too deep, too animalic for me and it doesn't have a coffee note. It's more in the rose direction. There's something about the accompanying 
coffee in here and the wood that makes this more preferable to me. And I do like that the coffee in here is in the espresso direction. It's a nice, strong coffee that really does the rose justice. Some might think of this as a rose fragrance and it depends on when you wear it, what you layer it with and all of that. Sometimes the rose is more pronounced than sometimes the coffee, but it belongs up here at the top of the, the list of fragrances that have strong coffee notes. We're moving into beast mode territory and I present to you from Dua Fragrances, Aphrodisiac Cafe. This is a combination of psychedelic love from Initio and intense cafe from Montal. So Dua sometimes will blend scent profiles to come up with a blend and that's what this is. And this is a very strong fragrance. Uh, I don't remember if it lasts super duper long, but that's not the point. It comes on super strong. It is a very heavy coffee fragrance, very heavy on coffee. Some of the other notes I want to make sure to read to you, Hedione Heliotrope, which gives it this nice powderiness. There's a myrrh note. There are some florals in here, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, but mm, this smells <laughs> like espresso to me, like a sweetened espresso that has a lot of syrup in it and some muskiness, a little bit of powderiness. The myrrh comes through here. This is very strong very potent. Uh, if you don't like those kinds of heavy, like espresso types of fragrances, you might not enjoy this, but if you do, yeah, try this out. Also from Dua Fragrances is Italiano. This is a dupe for Zerzhov's Italica, which I like a lot, but didn't last a long time on me. This has really great lasting power. You can see I'm starting to put a decent little dent in this. I really enjoy wearing this. It has a little bit of an aromatic touch and I'm not sure where that's coming from because there aren't any aromatic notes in here, but mostly this is a coffee, a coffee fragrance with some hints of toffee. And I love that there's an almond oil in here. So it's a really round, rich fragrance and it has great lasting power. This is one of the duos that I really enjoy. A fragrance that I haven't talked about yet, but will be featured in my Blind Buy Chronicles is from Zerzhov and it's called Golden Dalla and it's from the Coffee Break line. This is a really nice, spicy coffee fragrance that also has tonka bean in it. It has touches of chocolate and hazelnut and some hints of incense. Now, sometimes this can smell a little bit like marijuana. It just does but it, that fades off quickly and you're left with this really rich coffee fragrance. So just know that if you're interested in this, that you may get a hint of that and it's a little bit off-putting at first, but that fades off. Really lovely coffee fragrance that a lot of people don't talk about. Maybe they don't know about it. I don't know, but it's delightful. From It's from the Coffee Break line from Zerjoff. Really beautiful. My very, very favorite coffee fragrance, hands down, and it's here sort of at the back of the pack, but not the last one I'm gonna mention because it is not the strongest of the bunch, but it is my favorite. To me, it is one of the truest coffee smells. It's Coffee Addict from Theodorus Calatinis. You've seen this probably, if you're on Instagram, you've seen this make the rounds. And if you have looked up any gourmand or coffee fragrance videos on YouTube, certainly this one is featured. It's very reasonably priced. I think US conversion is somewhere in the $50 range. So check this out, Greek perfumer. A lot of beautiful selections from his line, but this one in particular is like straight up coffee with some caramel syrup and vanilla soft, sweet, delicious. Oh yeah. Makes your mouth water. It's that fresh cup of coffee in the morning with a heavy dose of caramel syrup in it. Sweet and long lasting. Adore this. Strong coffee fragrance, although I can't say that it lasts all day long, but it certainly comes on strong and has presence while it lasts, which is about half a day. It's from Demeter and it's nitro coffee and it's exactly as it sounds. <laughs> the only note in here is that I know of coffee. So it is designed to smell like that. This is one, if you want your house to smell like coffee, you can certainly spray things with this. It serves as a house spray as well, but I use it as a fragrance and I will layer this with other fragrances if I wanna bring out the coffee or gourmand aspects of something. Super affordable, somewhere in the $20 range. If you like Intense Cafe from Montal, but you're left wishing that it smells more like coffee, check out Ristretto Intense Cafe. This smells very much like an espresso kind of a coffee. It does still have the rose that Intense Cafe has also. There's vanilla, there's some spiciness in this, caramel, so it has some sweetness, but it's definitely like a rose and espresso fragrance. It's a little bit like the Tom Ford Cafe Rose without like that heavy woodiness that the Cafe Rose has, and it's strong on that espresso note. And it's long lasting, 
and projects far if that matters to you. The next two fragrances are by far the strongest coffee notes in my collection and can be too much for a lot of people. So you have to be on the daring side to try these. Otherwise, please don't. You might get your feelings hurt by how these fragrances smell. Floral Street Alang Alang Espresso. I haven't gone to a full bottle yet because I'm still getting to know this fragrance and deciding whether I want to smell like this all day or not. Sometimes this smells like coffee and cigarettes. I don't like that cigarette part of things. And then other times I get what this fragrance is supposed to smell like. I don't get Alang Alang in here, although it's part of the note structure. This does smell like a strong, heavy, thick espresso scent. There's a lot of woodiness. There's some patchouli in here. There's some pepperiness in here. My husband is off camera and wants to smell this. So let's get his opinion. What do you think, Darren? Actually, I think that that act might smell really nice on you. It's a very bold, daring fragrance. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to come out of this man's mouth right now. It's way too much going on. <laughs> way too much going on. You don't like it? No. I think it's a hard fragrance to love. There's parts of it that I really like. Yeah, but then there's parts that I don't like. It's Do like you I smell tiramisu in it? There's I a tiramisu note. I smell coffee, I smell wood. It's just like a crowded house. A crowded a house? A crowded house. Some people you like, some people you don't. It's too much. It's mixed company and he's ready for all those notes to go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the last one, and this is one that I had to come to love. If you look back at the very, very early videos on my channel, I have this wonky video about odd, peculiar, strange fragrances. The video quality is horrendous. My son did it with me and it's actually kind of funny, but I talked about this fragrance in that video. So if you want a good laugh, go check out that early filming. This was from Atelier Cologne and it's Cafe Tuberosa. This is discontinued if I'm not mistaken and certainly Atelier Cologne has pulled out of the US, but you can still find these on the gray market. Check it out. This is actually a full bottle that I purchased after going through a travel spray like this. Because again, this is another one that I wasn't sure that I liked. When I first tried this, the coffee note in here is so earthy, dirty, and pungent that it kind of smacks you around. It's an ill kind of reaction. At first, if you're newer to fragrances and you haven't smelled a wide variety of just bizarre and strange fragrances, after you have, this kind of grows on you. There is a floral aspect to it. I don't get a huge heavy dose of tuberose as this would suggest, Cafe Tuberosa, but there is a floral aspect, some woodiness, probably some patchouli in here. I haven't looked at the note structure in a long time and like a heavy, heavy dose of a deep, dark, dirty coffee espresso kind of a thing. Try this one out there and see what you think. This smells like an unlit cigarette. He just said, he was remarking again on Alang Alang Espresso and said that it smells like an unlit cigarette. I have gotten ashtray out of this on some days and then other days I've gotten this really beautiful, sophisticated scent. So kind of goes back and forth. <laughs> you like this on me, by the way. I did? You do. When I wear that, you love it on me. Cafe Tuberosa. I do not like it on me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you won't be wearing it. Definitely not. I would say that this is the like dark gothic cousin of Cafe Rose. They have, they're like in the same family. This is almost like an extreme end of the same spectrum of this fragrance. So those are my coffee scents. Did I miss something that's in your collection? Drop it in the comments below. Share your favorite coffee fragrances so that others can chime in. I love when you talk back and forth to each other in the comments and learn from each other as well as I learn from you. So thanks so much for joining me and have a fabulous day. Take care, friends.